Hello, everybody, and welcome to Good Stuff. Today we have a, uh, a, a great guest here. I'm really excited. Episode number six of Good Stuff. I want to welcome on the head wrestling coach at Ohio State University, Tom Ryan. Tom, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, good with you, Coach. It's, it's really good to connect here with you. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people already know about you, but do you mind just giving us a little bit of, of your background, you know, family, and just, you know, where you've been up to this point? Sure. The coolest thing I've been able to do in my life is, along with my wife and God, make a couple kids. <laughs> That's about the coolest thing I've been able to do. I've got four children. Um, met my wife when I was uh, right out of college. I met her uh, first year out of college. I was working at Indiana University. Bobby was still there at the time okay. uh, when I was working there. That was in uh, 1992. Coach Knight was there. Met Lynette, um, who was actually a, a, a classmate of Bob's son, Pat, who ended up being the head coach at, I think, Texas Tech. He was the head coach at Texas Tech. So I met her there um, you know, prior to uh, meeting Lynn. Uh, I grew up in Long Island, New York, about 35 miles uh, east of, of uh, Manhattan, uh, about eight miles from the Atlantic Ocean in a little town called Wontaw, New York. Uh, had a great family life. A um, lot of good buddies that were high-level competitors in the neighborhood, just really fortunate, right? Not everybody gets to grow up with uh, uh, like-minded people right across the street, right down the road. So I had some good friends that, that, that were right there. And, and uh, you know, competition was a way of life early on. You know, we had, uh, we were like the Brady Bunch plus one. So there was, there was seven of us. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, older brother. Uh, so there were, there were, there were, there were three, there were, there were uh, three Ryans and four Curielli. So parents separated really young. Uh, mom met a really I mean, an amazing man, Sal. He had four kids. Mom had three. We aligned perfect ages. So it was a big, it was, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, da the daily life there was a lot of fun. So, you know, I had a lot of love in the home, you know, all the things I think that you can take for granted. You know, we didn't have a ton of money, but we had love and we had, we had truth and we had uh, compassion. And, and it was, it was, you know, we, we saw our parents work hard. And we, we learned a lot of things at the time. You don't realize how valuable they are. But uh, so it gave me a really good foundation of trust and, 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 and willingness to take chances because I felt very loved. And uh, so anyway, that was kind of my, my upbringing. Got into wrestling in seventh grade. And actually, I don't coach basketball, but I, I, basketball is my love, man. Oh, that's nice. Basketball was my love. Basketball <laughs> was my love. I mean, I was good. I scored seven points a game. I seven to ten points every game in sixth grade, yeah. and I got cut. I got cut in seventh grade, and I was uh, that was that was rough. And my brother's like I, that dinner that night. My brother's like, "Well, what, what are you gonna do? Man, you're gonna wrestle." I'm like, "I am not wrestling. Like, I am not wrestling. I'll make the basketball team next year." He goes, "You're gonna wrestle." And the, you know, the thing that was the big deterrent for me was that singlet, that uniform. I'm like, yeah. "I'm not wearing," you know. So anyway, I, you know. Shortly after, I jumped into wrestling, and first day in the room, it was for me. Fell in love with it, and, you know, so started in seventh grade, and, you know, God has really uh, taken me along part of the journey here. Yeah, I, w I would say, I mean, I just uh, just started to get to know you, obviously, but then following your path, it, it's been amazing the success that you've had. What, what would you say, what do you, what do you attribute to all that? I mean, you guys have, have won a national championship. <laughs> You know, you've been runner-up five times. You've done extremely well in the Big Ten. What's the secret sauce? Well, you know this is coaching, right? There is no secret sauce, right? Mm -hmm. That's the reality, right? Give me some good guys. Um, I would say, obviously, uh, a deep love for it. I, th I think, I think the, the um, building a mass, right, building a mass that, that, that people uh, want, that, that draws people in, so the bigger, the bigger mass, the better. And the big mass is just pure love of it, the passion for it. Um, uh, yeah, and then, of course, that mass attracts people. We, we, we listed in every formula ever, ever, ever uh, studied on how to become successful, hard work is times two. Take hard work, multiply it by two, and then factor in, sprinkle in the rest of these things. And, uh, you know, and the hard work gets old at some point if you don't deeply love it. Right. So the deep love for it, I think, you know, is, is so critically important. Uh, uh, so and then people, right. The mass attracts people. It's all about people to me. It's all about people get the. I mean, I'm a much better coach when I've got the right people. 
right? So as you know, I mean, we get a big recruit. I'll do car wheels down the hallway. We got to you know this, this, this is, uh, and the right recruit isn't just because he's a good wrestler. Right? It's the right, it's the, it's the right everything, emotional control, right? High, 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 high character, um, deep love for this sport. You know, so there's so many traits that we look for. Aggression, right? We we study aggression. Obviously, you know, Coach Ralph. You work with him. He has a money ball. He's he's created a money ball app for for wrestling. So there's a lot of different things that we look at before we just jump in. But ultimately, ultimately, I would say that there is no difference between difference between my work and play. They're 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 one and the same. They've messed. They blended. I love what I'm doing. Uh, uh, I work extremely hard at it. And and the love I have for it attracts other people that love it. Right, right, yeah, that makes total sense to me. I I I can see that passion in you. Now, you know, there there's business leaders on here as well as there's a lot of coaches who are listening. And so I, I think the one thing that I have a great deal of admiration for in both fields or any walk of life is the ability to sustain. I think it's so difficult to sustain success. You know, when I look at you and your career, you've been able to do that. You know, how do you sustain it? Uh, does complacency set in? You know, where are you at when it comes to all of that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, sustainability, uh, obviously, I think deep love, right, is sustainability. I think um, uh, the understanding, you know, I think, I think why you're in it, caring about others, um, you know, obviously evolving. You know, never, never, it's not like, hey, we, we, we won last year, so we don't need to evolve and, 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 and be problem solvers, be, 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 be creative. Uh, but I would say that, uh, you know, the, the ultimate thing, I think the ultimate uh, ingredient of sustained success, right, we can all look at people that were good for one year or two years, good for three years, but ultimately, sustained success falls on, uh, besides having talented, hardworking, people are passionate, it falls on character, right? It, 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 it's, it's character. Character without, without a strong culture uh, of, of honesty and integrity, sustainability will, will, will not happen. Um, it is, you're right, it's just not sustainable. So, so I think that, that for us has been the biggest piece, whether it's the men I hire or the recruits I'm looking at or anybody that is in my inner circle. You know, I just, got a, I just got a letter today in the mail from a guy named Jack Miller up by Wooster. He sent me all his favorite, you know, biblical, scriptural, uh, uh, favorite verses in scripture, right? So I think being very deliberate on who we let into our inner circle, right? Very, very deliberate on, on um, what we let into our minds, what we're listening to, what we're watching. You know, I think all these things. And then, and then leading people in that way, that every thought that comes into your brain, if it doesn't belong there, why is it there? Why are you not screening better? Um, and, and ultimately, ultimately, uh, you know, uh, character is, is the most important piece to me of sustainability. So do you think it's that character and that passion that, that you have and that you've instilled in the program that you recruit to, that you hire to, do you feel like that's what separates you from the rest of the pack? And, and if so, you know, just comment on that. And if not, what else is it? Or, or what do you see? What attributes are there that separate people? Because, you obviously, you know, you might have bad and average and good to great, but you, you found a way to separate that and, and consistently do it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, right, so the three C's, I know you had tight on, right? We used them at, uh, you know, Ohio State. I used a guy named Chet Scott with Bill Talib. So, right, the foundational piece of any successful organization is trust, right? So I've got to get recruits to trust. Uh, that I've got their back, that I have their best interest at heart at all times, even if it's not best for me. Although the organization is always a, is always uh, the, the the critical ingredient, but 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 to build trust is is critically important. So the three C's, right? And I'm, I'm, our our connection is a huge right competence, right character, mm -hmm. and then connection. And I think being able to just relate to people, right? I think that's just really important in sustainability. Being being able to just have deeper conversations with people and connect with them. They're not robots that are doing a job for you. They're human beings that are experiencing different things at different times. I think that's just emotional IQ or social IQ, just being able to assess and realize that, hey, you know what, today's just something simple, like, hey, my, my, my 41 pounder, she's really having a rough day. Something happened at home. Listen, it isn't cookie cutter, you never miss practice. Listen, you don't miss practice, but 
if you're if you're dealing with something and you're gonna be more out of going home and spending time with your family, I think it's just being really aware of of how to connect with people. I think that's really important in in um, you know in being 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 you know successful over time. Yeah, I agree. I think that's great, Coach. I, I I really think, especially during this time, that's my, one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is to connect and hopefully you're impacting people. You know, you can, and, and the trust thing, we all know that's extremely important in any relationship, right? But how do you, you you've got a process where you start recruiting, you know, and I, I've been in that world. How do you get them in such a short amount of time to trust you? And then what are some of the things that you're doing to build on that trust once you have them in your program? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So some of the trust is, right, based on, you know, based on just previous success, right? So, hey, the fact that, you know, they've had Olympic champions, world mm -hmm. champions, national champions, there's an immediate sense of, okay, well, at Ohio State, you know, they've done this. And if they can do it with this guy, I mean, my, my track record in high school looks a lot like this guy's track record. He went on to win this, mm -hmm. this, and this. You know, I think that uh, – he can maybe help me. So some of his perception initially, right? Well, um, obviously facilities and things that, 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 that garner some attention, but ultimately it's a lot of talking and a lot of communicating and a lot of being open with them and honest with them. And, you know, we, we, we talk about truth and love, right? The ability to, to be truthful with someone in a, in, in with, with full love, hundred percent of, of both. Um, and, uh, you know, that's just, that's a, a, a critical component for us in building a relationship with a recruit that, you know, as you know, the first time we can call them is June 15th going into their junior year. Right. So you have some time to, you know, you have some time to really build uh, some trust with them. We're open with them. Uh, we share the things we've done well. We share the things we haven't done well. Right. We're not perfect. We're, we're, but, but, but we, but we, they also know this is a democracy. This is not a dictatorship. This is your career. Uh, when you're, you know, for, from a parent standpoint, if you send your son here, this isn't the doors are locked and you don't get to come in, right? This isn't, you get, you don't get to communicate. So it's just, I think it's just really building, you know, deep relationships. Um, and obviously the other piece, right, of, of, of the trust is just, we, we, we've been successful. The plan works, right? So being competent, understanding if you've got a problem in a certain area, that we can help you fix it. We have, a, we have a prescription, right, to move you from the stuck place you might be to being unstuck. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love the authenticity. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, Coach. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't put on the singlet at all, but I, <laughs> I, I, I'd suit up for you right now. Um, you know, you, you talk about that culture, you know, and it's such a buzzword in, in I think, today's society. I guess I'd be interested in knowing – you know, and I, I think I can have an idea, but can you go into a little bit more as to how you, how you developed it there? And then is it all these things that you're talking about right now that are just going into that? You're just, you're investing daily into it every time. And that just continues to build that culture and obviously helps sustain it there as well. Yeah, I think, I think the culture, right, the fundamental, well, the fundamental piece of the culture are, are things that are in our control. Right. We try to make the culture is about more than just winning. Look, we, we, don't, we don't promise anything to recruits other than we are going to love you. We're going to challenge you. We're going to be honest with you. Right. Uh, and, and we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to track the things that are in your control, your effort, your attitude, your body language, your timeliness, your habits. We're going to help you with these with these with these, with these uh, pillars of success. We I never told a kid, you're going to win the Olympic gold medal. You're going to win four national titles. I've seen way too many things to think that any human can control that. We can't control that. We can, what we will do is control all the steps leading, leading up to you being the best you, right? We call it the best version of yourself, which has become a very common term at this point. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of communication with the team. We have leadership meetings. You know, we, we devote some time into, the first thing that we do when the team cut reports in, we teach them three things. We teach them how to listen, we teach them how to speak, and we teach them how to write. Right? That's that, that's the, you know, the national championship wrestling team. These are the things we sit around a table uh, with Bill to lead, which is an organ that comes in. We sit on the table. They're broken into small groups. They learn the they, they learn the gift of how to listen. They learn the gift of how to speak and the gift of how to write and express what you're thinking in a clear and concise way. That's the that's the foundational piece of Ohio State wrestling to start. You know, 
passing, right? It's mm -hmm. passing. It's catching the ball right. It's, I don't know, it's yeah. making sure you're John Wooden, making sure your Footwork, socks yeah. are, 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 you know, a guy with, with, without blisters is better than a guy with blisters. Right. So it's all fundamental things that, you know, I think over time these guys realize that these guys care about me. These guys care about me, you know, and then, and then they'll, they'll fight harder for you. Yeah, that's great. I, I was literally, I, I got interviewed this morning on a Facebook live from a local place here. And, and man, you were just speaking directly to me because he asked if I had one thing right now during this time. And I'm so big on, I just worry about what I can control. If I don't control it, I don't want to invest my time, energy, and effort into it. What do you see? Like, what, why, you know, you and I are sitting here talking, we might get that. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're great because of it and others aren't. Yeah. But why do people invest so much time in things that they don't control? Why do they get wrapped up in that? Yeah, it's an interesting loop that the brain can get caught up in. Um, and you need someone over time to just, you know, discuss, talk about it, ask questions mm. about it and get them, get them speaking. You know, we, we've, we've, I, well, I've learned, and I'm sure you too coach it. If people aren't looking your way, you can't really have a great impact on them, right? If they're turned away from you and they're not listening, right? You've been in a fight with your wife where you're arguing, she turns and she walks away and I keep chirping. She's not. Nothing I say, it's, not, it's, it's over. <laughs> She's going that way, right? Until she turns and faces and you just, you know, you've, you, you, know, the whole, you know, there's moments in time where, where someone acts, they, they are turning facing. And during those moments, you capitalize and, and try, to, uh, try to touch them. I want to go yeah. back to something you said earlier, which I think is so key. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you've been watching the Bulls series, the documentary on Sunday nights, but of course, Jordan got cut, and he becomes one of the greatest ones. You get cut, and we don't hear that story. So what uh, failure? It's a, it's a big part of all of our lives, you know, and, and I feel like some of the best athletes and coaches I've been around are able to take failure and mold it into something else. How's failure shaped your life? Yeah, man, I fail. Yeah, I fail constantly. Here's a thing that I had that I think was an incredible gift. I mentioned it briefly earlier, but I had something in my home. Not everybody has this in their home, right? I had so much love in my home. And listen, dinner was never different, whether I won the tournament or didn't, mm -hmm. right? So the people around me, they never, they never they treated me differently based on how well or not well I did. So the foundational piece for me was I love this sport. I love wrestling. I don't win all the time. I win more than I lose. But when I win, I'm not treated any differently. And um, that was just, that, that was really important for me uh, growing up. Um, and I think also as a coach, and then obviously as a competitor, you know, uh, I lost at the state tournament. I came home that night. I was loved the same way. I was never yelled at. I was never reprimanded. I was never slighted with a, the with a tongue, you know, that you, you, you know, you this or you that. Um, and it was just really powerful for me growing up. You know, I lost in the national finals at the University of Iowa, but it was always about, it was always about uh, deep effort and it was never about it defining me. It just didn't define me. You know, winning never will define me, right? So. Uh, well, that, that's, that's important to hear because I mean, man, you've, you've finished runner up five times, you know, that, that <laughs> so, some people would, you know, would, would not be able to handle that as much. Of course, you, you've won one of them, and, and, and that's something that nobody can ever take from you. And I understand that that's not defining who you are, but I think some people would stop, you know, when they reach that plateau yeah. and it continues to happen to them, you know. So, obviously, you know, you, you just keep going and going and going. So, is, is that one of your greatest strengths as a late leader? Let, let, I mean, let's focus on you as a second. What do you, what do you feel are those greatest strengths? I think understanding people is a strength. I think when I when I when I'm I'm talking with somebody, I'm not that concerned about getting. I'm, I, I want to listen more and understand, you know, what what I can do to help them. Uh, so I think connecting is 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 something I've been really fortunate to surround myself with a lot of good people, right? A, a lot of people in many areas of their life are better at what they're doing than I am, right? So so the the the. the you know, the, I'm not fearful of being around people that can lift me up, all right, and be around me. I mean, I think I'm, 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 I'm I know I'm a relentless competitor, 
right? So type A personality competitor. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, man. Got this. Okay. this <laughs> fries me. Um, yeah. uh, the deep love. You know, I said earlier, deep love for it. Um, you know, consistent. Just consistent in it. You know, uh, yeah, I like hard work. I like working hard. And I think, you know, one of the, I was telling you earlier before we got on air, but I'm, you know, I'm just finishing a book called Chosen Suffering. It's called Chosen Suffering. And it's about, it's about the, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a comparison in my life between uh, chosen suffering and unchosen, right? The things in my life that have happened that I've caused, that I've, that I've, that I've learned from. Right. So, you know, parents says, hey, you know, does my son have what it takes? Right. He's got a great, you know, young wrestler that's tough. And does my son have what it takes? Well, the answer, right, is with a question. How much is he willing to suffer? Mm -hmm. Right. Which is a similar, you know, which is, you know, which is a, which is a uh, you know, a synonym for sacrifice or love. What do you, how much are you willing to suffer? I don't know. I mean, yeah, he looks good to me. He looks really good to me. He's, he's, he, how much is he willing to suffer? So I think that that for me was, was something that was never a, a problem, right? And chosen suffering taught me so much and then unchosen suffering happened. And, and that's when I think for me, uh, I had a complete vision correction. Chosen suffering never, never had me curled up in a ball, right? Losing a wrestling, losing the national finals, man, it hurt. My team taken second five times. I want to win. It hurt. But it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't bone aching. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. What, what would you say are, are some of your, I think there's something to be said about people that have good habits. Um, and, and, and that can be a separator at times, especially being disciplined in those habits. What are some of the habits that you've built into your daily routine? I, I know we talked a little bit about you and I and faith playing a part of that. You know, so I'm sure that's something there. I know it is with me you know, every morning throughout the course of my day. What are some, what are some that you have in your daily routine? Habits. I think the biggest thing for me is get my mind right at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, I think every morning, you know, I'm up one, one, just an early riser. You know, I like to get up early, but, but uh, getting my mind right, whether it's, whether it's listening to the right music, Right. I, I, I think I do a good job at controlling what comes into my brain. I didn't always do a great job at that. But now that you, I realize the value and the importance of getting my mind right. So early morning is always get your mind right. Uh, usually it's a workout in the morning. Right. Just start the day right. Um, I, I try to not, not try. I do. I really I, I I'm a little bit of a ruminator, which isn't good. You know, if I make if I do something, I should like I make a mistake. I, I ruminate on it. But. But a big piece is really focusing on the things that I can do to make things better. You know, like, like, a, like a, let, let things go. I'm, 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 let things go. So, uh, you know, up early, control the, control the narrative in my own mind. Uh, I'm really focused on whether it's reading or really focused on making me stronger. Uh, a focus on my staff and making sure that they have what they need. Um, so other focused, right, also in my, in my organization. Uh, letting them be experts in the area they're experts in, not being over controlling. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in a Bible study. You know, I try to get Bible study in at least, at, you know, at, at least two or three times a week. I don't know, just, just yeah. I mean, wake up and attack. You know, I, yeah, I think right. kind of, you know. Where, where does where does the inspiration come for you? You know, what what motivates you? Where do you find that source? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think that as a young kid, I always had a lot of energy, you know, so I don't know if, if, you know, I just, I always wanted more, you know, I always, I, 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 you know, I, I grew up in a nice small little town and I, I just, I always wanted, uh, you know, not more materialistically, you know, I just, I just liked hard work. Right. Um, so, you know, now of course, you know, as I got older and went through some tough things, some, some failures, some losses, some unchosen suffering, you know, once I came to realize uh, why I'm on earth, how I got here, right, where I'm going, uh, that really, that's, that's the ultimate inspiration for me right now. So the absolute trust in, you know, I trusted so much in Dan Gable. He, was, he won 27 straight Big Ten titles. He won 17 actual titles, right? Why did I trust him? You know, why did I pour so much of my focus on trusting him because, well, he had a proven track record. Well, something happened in my life that caused me to look 
and consider life, right? Two options, chance or divinity. One's true, one's false. You don't get to, both don't get to be true, right? And uh, once I started to dig in that, I mean, ultimately that's the main inspiration of my life, you know, that, that uh, God is real, his, his, these are his people. And uh, I think he's the most sustaining force in the universe. We're going through this right now. Look, we, we lost the national championship. No NBA season. Concerts are canceled. Uh, pools are shut down. People are, what can you hold on to? What is the truth that we absolutely know is truth? Well, I've come to a place uh, that uh, more than anything I believe is that Jesus was who he said he was, right? So uh, the faith component for me, it sustains me in the midst of anything. So Yeah, for sure. Amen to that. And I, th I think there's just an overwhelming peace there that allows you to, to have the confidence to go about and attack that day like you're talking about. Um, what are some things you do as a leader? I mean, you, you mentioned maybe you're reading or you're a podcast guy or you, you're watching uh, videos. What, what, what do you, you know, where do you get that source of, of growth, if you will? Yeah, I think, you know, choosing my inner circle. You know, I don't have anybody really in my inner circle that I couldn't ask a, a question to about something that I need help with. And they wouldn't give me an honest truth and love answer. Right. So, so I really, I, I, I surround myself again, not only my coaches, but outside supporters that really have lived, they have wisdom, right. And the power of wisdom. I think for me, those are my go-tos, right. And it's like, so how can someone it's like, how can I, how could someone go to somebody that they, that they, on, on, a, on a really intense topic or something to help with and not have vetted out why they would go to that person, right? So um, that, that's, that's a big piece for me uh, of, of staying uh, in the right mindset is the inner circle that I have. What would you say if, if, if you had to go back here, let's, let's backtrack to uh, 18 year old Tom Ryan, you know, what, what would you tell him? You know, if you could talk to him right now, what would you tell him or just people yeah, that are maybe younger at any point in their lives here? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a troublemaker. I was really never in trouble as a kid. I, I mean, overall I lived a pretty clean, a pretty clean life. I mean, wrestling was my God, but I would say that um, probably the number one thing I would, I would say is uh, explore deeper how you got here. Mm, yeah, that's that's the number one thing that I would, I would, yeah, looking back at. Yeah. That's great. All right. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of somewhat rapid fire three things. Hey, three pointers I like to call for basketball, right? So give you, I'm going to okay. pass the, pass the rock to you and let you right. shoot some shots here and see if we get the, that point seven to 10 point games up here. Um, no, number one, if, if people could learn something from this talk, if you, if you want them to take away something and really hold on to it, what would it be? It would be, uh, why do you trust what you do? Um, and to deeply search for how you got to this place, how you got on this planet. Love it. Um, if, second one, if you could step in my shoes and, and, and do this, what would have you asked of yourself that I did not ask today? So give, give me some of that tough love or yeah. love tough. Yeah, I would say, yeah, that I would say what's the tough, probably what's the toughest thing you've been through in your life and how did you, how did you work through it? Got it. And then finally, good stuff is, is kind of the name of this, just something I, that I, I tend to say. <laughs> What's something right now? What's some good stuff you can close us with? Anything that you feel is, is appropriate uh, for, for this type of conversation? Yeah, good stuff would be, would be man, uh, build your mass. I mean, build your mass uh, and be, being that, uh, I mean, really, really introspectively assess yourself. It's painful, right? I, it's painful for me, right? I've, I'm a knucklehead. Right? I've done some things that, that I got to get through. Assess myself and really focus on really – it's hard work. It's a fight. It's a war. Hard work and, and do everything you can to build your mass and not worry about social media and what people think so much. Build your mass and know what you're building it on. Mm -hmm. right? Know what you're building it on. The stronger your mass, uh, the, more, the more things will be pulled towards you. 
I love it. Well, hey, finally, Coach, you talked about this book. Let, let's just let's just focus on that a, a little bit, and where our listeners can connect with you. The book website right now, release date, all that good uh, information you can supply for us, please. Yeah, there'll be an early release in mid May. I think around uh, May 18, 19, somewhere near 17. Uh, the website is chosensuffering.com. Okay, great. Uh, and it's, it's basically a, it's a play back and forth of what chosen suffering has taught me, what unchosen suffering has taught me, and kind of just stories in my life that, that uh, one, one, both helped me tremendously. Both, one, one nearly broke me, mm-hmm. and the others didn't. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then uh, you told me a little bit ahead of time. Twitter, Instagram. Where, where can they find you on there if they want to follow you in Ohio State wrestling? Yeah. So uh, wrestling bucks uh, is the is the program on on both Instagram and Twitter. And then Buckeye One Five Eight is on um, uh, Instagram and Twitter. That's my okay. person. And that's yours person. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, he. Uh, I can't. I can't thank you enough for for spending some time with us today. Um, I know I'm going to go back and rewatch this and, and jot some notes. It's hard sometimes when I'm talking to to not get sidetracked and grow and learn. But uh, I, I know you had a ton of valuable information for for all of us today. So so thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I think uh, as we always say here in closing, you know take this stuff and apply it. There is a ton of stuff in today's message from Coach Ryan that I think can be applicable to you in your life, you know, parent, spouse, employee, coach, leader, whatever that might be. But until next time, good stuff.